Hola, this is a um, a great game called Tally Ho. It's a board game. If you haven't played it, you should look into it. It's kind of kind of fun, but it's kind of sad too. They're hunting this poor bear. I was listening to the Monica Crowley um, show today, and um, she was really on target. She's on W O R on the weekends, um, Saturday, seven ten a.m. around noon time and um, she was talking about the the way um, Obama has been saying he's not spiking the ball and yet he's done that the entire time when he when he won office he told everybody I won so don't you know don't bother me um, and she mentioned the fact that they said um, the media was saying that uh, Obama was gutsy for this raid um, into into um, Pakistan to get Osama bin Laden. Um, the raid was only gutsy, as far as I'm concerned, if you consider any president not doing something in, in the, quote, national interest because of the polls. And if any president who would do that, obviously, should not be president. So to give the president um, a slap on the back for doing something that, that we would expect from any president, there's something wrong with that. The, the, the main consideration here is that regardless of how this thing turned out, and that regardless of how it does turn out eventually, uh, the media will will treat Obama like a hero. They've yet to actually been critical on Mr. Obama for anything. Now you could say the the right wing media. I mean, someone like a Rush Limbaugh, uh, Mark Levin, um, Monica Crowley, Mike Savage, Steve um, Steve um, can't remember his last name, uh, Sean Hannity. Um, Obviously, they will. They would try to probably put some sort of spin on um, um, some screw up if they could. To a point, I, I think more that uh, they have been very conciliatory. But I'd like. I'd, I've never seen a case where the media has actually come down on on Obama for anything. I mean, he basically gets spin. You have people like Chris Matthews who said they'll do anything to make him successful in office. <clears throat> so this whole thing about risk and gutsy, uh, I think, is really totally overblown. And you know it, and I know it. And um, the comparison, I guess, is that um, what Jimmy Carter tried to do to rescue our, our um, members of the consulate over there in Iran when it was taken over by uh, the Iranians, Actually, it was taken over without a shot being fired. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the Marines who who didn't defend that embassy uh, with their lives was was were derelict in duty. That's their that's why they're there. That's why they have that tour of duty to lay their lives down if necessary to defend that embassy. They chose not to do that, and the employees in the embassy um, ultimately. Um, were held hostage and really they should have been in theory uh, written off um, from the standpoint of the government as it was what, what Jimmy Carter uh, was held accountable for is the fact that he shut down the government over this embassy and yes I'm, I'm glad he thought about rescuing this the embassy uh, people with a, with a very daring raid but I'm glad the raid was cut short because I think it would have been a greater disaster had it gone to completion, to fl a flourishion. Um, from the standpoint, it was just too little, too little firepower to go into an area where they were expecting them. It was a much greater, by many magnitudes, greater of a challenge than what we did with supposedly uh, killing Osama uh, bin Laden. I mean, they went into hostile territory. Um, they, they were struck by sandstorms, low visibility, 
and uh, I think one of the helicopters collided with the uh, re refueling plane on the ground. And it was a disaster uh, from that standpoint, but it wasn't um, Carter's fault. I don't recall him really taking heat uh, for the failure. I think the military took some heat because they used the wrong type of pilots flying the helicopters who weren't used to these long, tiring um, uh, missions, helicopter missions, or which branch supposedly should have been employed in that. Uh, that might have been a, a Carter uh, snafu, but only because the military screwed up. I think uh, Carter came under under criticism on this because he really um, was kowtowing to the Iranians and letting them affect us in what we're doing. Um, he could have given them an, an ultimatum and uh, said, "Give us our give us our people back, or we're going to take out your your um, your headquarters." I mean, that would have um, gotten some respect. And if we happen to lose our uh, people in the embassy, you know, I guess that's the way it would be. But as it was, the entire nation was shut down for, you know, 100 people. And, uh, you know, we lose, we lose hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in airline accidents all the time, and it doesn't shut down the, uh, the nation. So uh, getting back to um, Monica, Monica Crowley's um, show, um, I think it was a pretty good show, but she really missed out on the fact that uh, I don't think there was a risk uh, for Obama. I don't think there ever is a risk for Obama. Anything that actually gets out to the public is downplayed, except for a few, a few um, people with right-wing leanings. The whole bulk of, bulk of the, uh, the media, the people who write the news, it's all got a pro-Obama uh, slant. And it always will. And whatever that force is, who knows? I know um, you, um, uh, McCarthy um, was talking about the communists in the, um, the, the media and the government, and uh, everybody was down on it. But it turns out after the Soviet Union broke down, they, they got a bunch of records, and they found out that uh, McCarthy, related to McCarthyism, uh, he was uh, on target. There were a lot of communists in our government. And uh, th they still, the left and the media still talk about McCarthyism when they know now the guy was right. Maybe he didn't like his methods, but the fact of the matter, he was right. And we have people like George Soros basically calling the shots on presidential elections, and no one seems, seems to care. So back again um, to this, this mission that, that we, uh, we pulled off. Um, if, in fact, we knew who we got and we weren't chasing our tail, um, I would say that um, I would be hard-pressed to be critical of Obama on, on um, that mission, if, in fact, it really was a mission and that he wasn't set up by Bush. And we'll go back over this again. Uh, both uh, Bush, at the end of his term, did not really think getting Osama was a big deal, and during the beginning of, of Obama's um, uh, Obama's uh, power, um, he didn't think uh, getting Osama was a big deal. In fact, they didn't want to talk about the war on terrorism. I forget what they, they tried to restructure, uh, how, what we called terrorists and all that. I think there was all kinds of political games going on. So... All of a sudden, now it's the biggest thing that ever happened, and we don't have a body to prove who the heck it is. And I'll bring up Pat Tillman again. He was killed with friendly fire, and for months and months and months and months, the government, military, all claimed he died in this glorious battle, saving his men and the whole thing in true John Wayne uh, fighting CB uh, tradition, and turned out um, that he was killed by friendly fire. That's not to demean. Um, Pat Tillman, he was a brave man, a very brave man, and he sacrificed and did more than most of us would. He gave up uh, a certain uh, career uh, as, a, as a football player. He could have been a millionaire, and he chose to, he got caught up with the patriotism, and, and God bless him. I think he also uh, wanted to be there to help his brother get through this thing, too. His brother was stationed over there, and that might have contributed to him taking more risks than he should have. So um, we should always have a place for uh, uh, 
uh, Pat Tillman, not, not that he was any braver than a lot of other men who have uh, paid their dues over there and, and died and got injured, but um, he definitely didn't have to go. He did it for true, pure um, patriotic reasons, and um, I think he exemplifies uh, sacrifice in terms of giving up everything to help this, this, this country. Uh, in terms of this raid into into uh, Pakistan, um, I don't see it as a as a great 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 accomplishment. Other than if they got the right person, the the intelligence was great, and I think putting together a team, it was just something that they they should have done, and so supposedly in the manner which they did it. Um, but as far as the the um, danger that they ran into, the danger they ran into was so little that you have to wonder if they were actually protecting Osama bin Laden and not a, um, um, a look-alike, um, a, um, someone pretending to be uh, o Osama bin Laden. There was no escape tunnels. There was no plan B for him. And um, you would think that um, if he was that important, if they had all this stuff there, that they'd be able to either, number one, blow the stuff up, destroy it. Uh, something stinks about the whole thing, and like I said, uh, they destroyed the body, and we're supposed to, we're supposed to uh, count on some DNA evidence. Um, we do know the CIA was making its own films, making believe they were Osama bin Laden. And the fact that the uh, Al-Qaeda now says that we got the right guy, I mean, as I said in other... Um, other um, YouTubes that um, what do you expect them to say that was um, that was something that anybody would say to take advantage of the whole thing anyhow that's the story take care bye bye